Coming up, we had to Frankfurt to see what legislation was passed in the final hours of this year's General Assembly. President Trump's daughter and advisor Ivanka Trump was in the bluegrass yesterday. We'll show you where she visited and why. And we now know when a Perry County murder suspect will go on trial. We'll have the latest developments in the case. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning and happy Friday to you. If you're just now joining us, the time is 5.30. Let's go ahead and check in with forecaster Brandon Robinson and a look at your forecast this morning. Brandon, there were a few sprinkles earlier today. What's the idea for the rest of the day? Back and forth all day, Mace. We're going to continue to see things, again, scattered, but not as bad temperature-wise. Still pretty nice there, pretty mild. Let's take a look at the cameras this morning. We started in McKee in Jackson County and still pretty quiet there. No major issues. A little breeze you see there on some of the flags starting to pick up just a little bit. We're looking at a little bit of rain starting to try to spread out, but it's kind of dying off to the east now as we head to the first part of your day. Temperatures, Ridge Valley split once again, cooler in those valleys, but still upper 40s, mid to upper 40s, and mid to upper 50s there on the ridge tops. App forecast for today, you can get the app in both app stores and you can see temperatures get close to 70 under cloudy skies with those scattered chances for rain. Full forecast in just a few minutes. Macy. All right, thank you, Brandon. Not too bad of a day ahead for us. Definitely enjoying the spring temperatures, too. The regular session of the Kentucky General Assembly wrapped up just before midnight last night. Angela Raygard has more on what legislation made it through just under the wire. The options are bad for the, the, the general fund, for the taxpayer, for the delivery of services, and we're trying our best to strike the balance amongst all three of those. Between a rock and a hard place, that's how some lawmakers are describing House Bill 358 and went to a free conference committee in the final hours on the final day of the session, where the House and Senate came up with a compromise between their versions of the bill. The new bill treats regional universities, health departments, and other quasi-governmental agencies as one, freezing their pension contribution at 49% for one year. After that, employers have to decide whether they want to stay in the Kentucky Employee Retirement System or get out. If they stay, their contribution increases 1.5% each year from that 49%. They have no ability to pay their ARC right now. The question is, should we do our best to help them maintain their 49% level or should we put them into a situation where their only option is bankruptcy and they pay nothing? If agencies opt out of the system, there are now incentives to pay what they owe at a discount. As for employees, some will have one chance to decide whether they want to stay in the pension system or move to another plan. Others will be moved to university or quasi-provided defined contribution plans. For leaders at Eastern Kentucky University, this bill keeps them from nearly doubling what they paid in contributions this year. So this is a bill that, that we have endorsed from the beginning. And so we are uh, we are very much appreciative of the one-year freeze to study this issue, get the actuarial analysis, and then make an informed decision based on our actual accrued liabilities. The bill passed both the Senate and the House, but it was met with opposition. Some saying this was rushed. They call the bill costly and say ultimately it could hurt employees. The bill now goes to the governor's desk to sign or veto. For now, reporting in Frankfurt, Angela Rygard, WKYT. In other legislative news, Kentucky lawmakers have given final approval to a bill that would ban the use of all tobacco products and e-cigarettes on school grounds. The Senate voted 28 to 10 to send House Bill 11 to Governor Bevin. The bill supporters say it would help um, youth smoking. Republican Senator John Chicole called it the very definition of government overreach in opposing the measure. The majority of Kentucky's school districts do not ban tobacco products on campus. And speaking of smoking bans, one will soon be in place at all theme parks in the happiest place on earth. Disney announced the measure this week, saying all locations, including Disneyland and Disney World, will be smoke-free starting on May 1st. Officials say there will be areas outside the parks where you can light up. Governor Bevin has appointed a former judge to serve on the state Supreme Court. He appointed David Buckingham to serve the 1st District. 
Former Justice Bill Cunningham served that district before he retired. The district covers two dozen counties in western Kentucky. Buckingham has served as a court of appeals judge, circuit judge, and district judge since beginning his judicial career in 1982. He retired from the bench in 2011 and returned to private law practice. Over in West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice signed a bill earlier this week that will lower severance taxes on thermal or steam coal. The cut is 2% over three years, taking it from the current 5% down to 3 Justice said that he is doing this to ensure the coal operators will continue to employ miners in the long term. Critics say the cut will cause a major reduction in state revenue by year three. Ivanka Trump was back in the bluegrass yesterday. It's her second visit to Kentucky, touting workforce development. Garrett Weimer tagged along as the daughter and advisor to President Trump toward the Toyota plant in Georgetown. During her time here in Georgetown, Ivanka Trump applauded Toyota's training efforts and spoke of the need for more workforce development nationwide. It's something she's been vocal about, and it's what brought her back to the bluegrass, touring the Toyota plant with company executives and Governor Matt Bevan. She learned about the company's training program and met with workers, even took some time for pictures with them. Toyota leaders signed the pledge to America's workers, an effort to encourage companies to train their workers well and help them grow. The company pledged 200,000 new apprenticeship, skills training, and other development opportunities. Here at yeah, Kentucky. At a roundtable discussion, Toyota execs, workforce development very, very program leaders, business. and students uh, joined Trump and the governor, off, talking about start. making sure Kentucky workers have the skills needed to continue to grow the engineering and manufacturing industries. I can tell you that the federal government and the White House are laser focused on ensuring that this country's greatest asset, which is our workforce, is prepared to fill the jobs of today and the jobs of tomorrow. Trump said there are open jobs and people who need them. The key is making sure they're on the right path to be able to do those jobs. In Georgetown, Garrett Weimer, WYMT Mountain News. This is Ivanka Trump's second visit to Kentucky in the past five months. She toured workforce development programs in eastern Kentucky last fall. Meanwhile, President Trump says he's overriding the administration's proposal to eliminate funding for the Special Olympics. Reed Binion has the latest. I find it very disheartening that she would be cutting the costs of an organization that is number five in the world that people are well known of and to take away monies that help us not just in our athletics but in the way of life to show others that we can move forward and that we can be a part of society. The Special Olympics was in danger of being completely cut from federal funding after the Department of Education proposed eliminating it from their budget for next year. President Trump says that's not happening. I've been to the Special Olympics. I think it's incredible. And I just authorized a funding. I heard about it this morning. I have uh, overridden my people with funding the Special Olympics. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, who has proposed the same cut twice before, immediately flipped the switch on her department's plans, saying in a statement, quote, I am pleased and grateful the president and I see eye to eye on this issue and that he has decided to fund our Special Olympics grant. We're in a moment here to celebrate, but for, for all those young people, life is still very difficult. If you're different, it's still tough. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Two Defense Department officials say the DOD is scouting sites along the U.S.-Mexico border to build new physical barriers. Small teams are on the ground in Yuma, Arizona, and the El Paso sector of New Mexico and Texas. Each assessment is supposed to take roughly one week. The new construction will be funded by the billion dollars recently transferred by the Pentagon. Yesterday, we learned the trial date for a man accused of murder. James Ronnie McIntosh pleaded not guilty Thursday morning. The Perry County Grand Jury indicted him Wednesday. Police say he shot Danny Mullen several times in late February. Defense attorneys asked the judge to lower McIntosh's bond, but the judge denied their request. 250000 cash is just a little bit more than Ronnie and his family can, can put up. Uh, Ronnie's not a flight risk. He, he's not going anywhere. Uh, yes, it is difficult. This is not like a robbery uh, in that type of case or a home invasion. 
It's, uh, I love interest matter, and uh, that makes these things particularly difficult. If McIntosh is able to pay his bond, he cannot contact testifying witnesses in addition to being placed under house arrest. We reached out to Danny Mullen's family. They did not want to talk right now. McIntosh's trial is set to begin on October 7th. A man suspected of murder in Whitley County pleaded not guilty in federal court to drug charges. This is Daniel Knotts. Police believe he shot his girlfriend, Jerry Johnson, earlier this month. She died at the hospital. Police have not charged him with her murder, but they will present the case to a grand jury. On top of murder, he could also face fetal homicide charges for the death of Johnson's baby, who doctors delivered. The baby girl died just days later. There was a large police presence yesterday afternoon in a rural area of Lincoln County after human remains were found. The remains were discovered in the South Fork community under a train bridge. Police have an area roped off with crime scene tape and are not allowing crews to get very close at that time. We don't know if that was a man or woman or how long the remains have been there, but people say it's common for people, even children, to walk over this bridge. And still to come, the Plugged In Movie Crew will have a review on the live action version of the children's classic, Dumbo. After the sunshine of the last few days, it's going to be weird not to see much of it for the next few days. Don't worry, it'll be back just in time for the beginning of April. I'll have the full forecast in about three minutes.